succeed. Yeah, and that passion is really what it takes. And I think, you know, your your position um, is very specific, but in a greater sense, I mean, your your task is almost to create an ecosystem in Rock Hill for entrepreneurship. And Rock Hill has always been a community that kind of, you know, punches above its weight. And, you know, the community always kind of somehow fills demand even when, you know, it, it the odds are against them. Um but you're kind of tasked with creating this ecosystem, not really out of thin air because the culture's there, um, but it hasn't really matured maybe compared to some other communities. Like people always like to talk about Greenville or, you know, the research triangle. Yeah. Um, what What are some of those challenges in kind of creating that ecosystem that you see? Like where are the components that feed together to, to create and nurture and, and kind of um, take it from kindling to a, a full-blown fire? So there's a guy named Brad Feld, F-E-L-D, who wrote a book called Startup Communities. And, and Brad also um, is the guy who's credited, uh, he's a co-founder of um, Startup Weekend, Techstars, um, these uh, really great innovative programs um, that go into communities and, and help um, just bring these ideas to life. Okay, so um, Brad wrote what was called the Boulder Thesis, and uh, he, he moved from Boston to Boulder. And this book, by the way, is at the library. Anybody can get it. What's it uh, called again? Startup Communities. I didn't okay. tell you the name of the book. I apologize. Right. So Brad Feld is yeah. the author, and the name of the book is called Startup Communities. Brad wrote what was called the Boulder Thesis. When he moved from Boston, he began to uh, work amongst other entrepreneurs. Um, he was in tech. Uh, other entrepreneurs within Boulder that really had not been built out as a startup community. It really wasn't known for entrepreneurship at the time. So he kind of started to see these, these pieces come together. Boulder um, having a really strong um, uh, uh, academic uh, presence with uh, Colorado State University is there, a couple other universities uh, in and around the area and in the shadow of Denver. And so pulling from um, you know, what was a culture in Denver. Um, sound familiar, right? When you're in the shadow of a really big city. And um, so um, Brad began to connect and put together and, and, and I appreciate you saying, you know, that I'm creating the ecosystem. Um, I'm just, I'm just collaborating the ecosystem truly. Like I, I, I'm not creating, like there are really great organizations and, and people who are already at work. Um, I have been tasked um, and, and I love it. I've, we've got a meeting in June uh, for the very first time where we're going to have this, this ecosystem builder partner meeting where we're all going to get in the same room together. We're going to start talking about, you know, like what you're doing and what I'm doing and, and make sure that we're in, not in uh, each other's lanes um, uh, in not knowing uh, perhaps we can collaborate on some issues. Um, you know, one can take a supporting role, one can take a leading role. But Brad Feld said that that these players in the ecosystem are your, it is professor and student innovation. It is your city and county and state governments collaborating, you know, in, in it to win it with you. Um, it, it is your um, entrepreneurs talking and having a place to meet and, and having uh, uh, third spaces that are important to them besides homework and where do, where do y'all meet? What do you do? Um, and, and he talked about what was called the entrepreneurial stack and that um, you really have to look at all of these folks that are coming to the entrepreneurial game, to the small business game. And how are, you know, how, how are you servicing or what programs and services are available really to everyone in that ecosystem? So um, reading Brad's book, collaborating with other entrepreneurial support organizations, ESOs, which is kind of the affectionate name for what it is that the Gravity Center technically is. Um, it's not an incubator. It's not a. It's not an accelerator in those iterations, so to speak. Maybe one day we will accelerate or incubate businesses within the Gravity Center, but right now it really is just connecting all of those pieces. Um, what SBDC, the Small Business Development Center, is doing over at Winthrop. Uh, what United Way is doing. What the library is doing. What the the uh, Department of Commerce is doing. Um, how you know who's who's in it? Bell? Oh my goodness, the work that Bell is doing. How can can all of, of us who are players in the state, in the county, and in Rock Hill uh, play in the sandbox together to, to better these, the economic outcomes of this community? Um, what have I seen? I've seen a lot of willing participants that just were not really meshed together. Mm -hmm. You know, I, um, I joke that, um, you know, the, your grandmama's jello salad, you know, I mean, it's, that's, that's got to go in the refrigerator for a little while, you know, like that's there, there's a congeal. process that's yeah. got to congeal. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a process to this that just is going to take a little bit of time. Um, a lot of trust and a lot of transparency. And yeah. I'm all about that. 
And I imagine it takes a couple wins, right? Like it takes a couple of those companies to move from one phase to another, maybe get some seed capital and get their first customers and start to revenue. How, what does the Gravity Center do to help engineer those wins for companies coming in? Well, we, we love the publicity, yes, when we get those really big um, announcements that, you know, the big manufacturer, the, the hundreds of jobs are coming to the area. That is absolutely fantastic. But we cannot forget the role of small business in South Carolina and in York County. We have to remember that the majority of jobs that are created in this state, the overwhelming majority of jobs that are created in this state are from small businesses, okay? So that in itself will always be a win, the two jobs three job four job this small it, and it's see it's a creep it's a creep uh you know small little incremental uh, moving the needle on those jobs what we need to start looking at beyond just the number of jobs we need to start talking about livable wages we need to talk about uh, we need to start tracking uh, the payroll for those jobs because if a company starts and, and you're looking at folks that are making you know 40 percent more than the average median wage uh, in York County hey let's consider that a win even if it's just three or four people right now so let's let's look at that that is a metric so there's it's it's not even i don't want to say the creative ways to you know to find your wins but it can't we can't just continue to always look at sheer numbers of how many uh, how many business licenses there are because as you and i both know one business license could make a tremendous impact in yeah. this area because of the work that they're doing so um you know trying to um you know Finding again in the stack those entrepreneurs that that need help with their again with their idea getting to the next level. They need to know um, where you get a business license. They need to know how you know what entity is best for them. We've got a class on Tuesday um, where um, uh, Todd Green, a, a CPA, is going to come in and talk about forming your business entities and understanding your financial reports. Um, you know, basic foundational business knowledge, which will always be free mm -hmm. and available to the public at the Gravity Center. Stake mm -hmm. my career on it okay we are we are absolutely open to the public and we want to make sure again foundational business knowledge is there besides that going you know if you need access to develop a prototype if you need to understand how to connect your and uh, to be able to protect your intellectual property um, you need to begin uh, securing your um, you know your patents um, you need to connect with a uh, you know someone over at Winthrop in data science because you're going to mine data for your customer base all of these things, that takes it up a little bit more. So see what I'm talking about in the stack? So yeah. you've got, you know, a, a very basic level, you know, perhaps a solopreneur that's just going to work out of their house. You're going to help. You're going to help someone that's kind of getting things going. Then they get things going and suddenly they're in the mood for a little venture capital, a little angel investing happening to them, mm -hmm. connecting them with those folks. Suddenly we got a, we got a, we got a business. We got a real, <laughs> we have a funded, revenueing, growing, scaling business here. Okay. Right. So it, it, you, you have to, um, we have to tell our story better. We have to find when those when those businesses come out of the Gravity Center, when they come out of SBDC, when they come out of Bell. We need to tell our stories and how these, you know, the public dollar investment, the private dollar investment, the kindness, the mentorship, uh, the goodwill, the connections that have been made, um, and how Rock Hill continues to foster that, and how we want to continue to foster it, and and really tell their story about how they how they were able to scale and take it to the next level. And I think that will attract more businesses to this area and more folks that have ideas that know that it really can happen here. I think you're absolutely right. And I do think, you know, you really touched on it. And this is something that kind of keeps me up at night is, you know, we can't always count on businesses moving into South Carolina, especially into York County, mm -hmm. to grow our tax base, to, you know, create jobs and create opportunity. If we're not doing everything we can to foster and, you know, create those opportunities to begin here and grow here. We're relying on people coming to us and our, our tax code just doesn't produce that incentive to do so. And we kind of have to fall all over ourselves and create incentives to get someone to move into York County. It seems like it would be, uh, I hate to use the word easier. It would be smarter to just grow those businesses within the County. But when you first became aware of this position um, and you were living in the low country. Is that right? Hilton Head. Hilton Head. Okay. So you're in 